Let's get into this uh, business to do with the little numbers you see sometimes around the element symbols, particularly in chemical formulas, which again, I'll explain what a chemical formula is in the end of this video series. But uh, for now, just go with me. When you have a bunch of uh, element symbols written together in a bundle, that's what I'm referring to. So, to help you understand, I've uh, put together this, this uh, learning tool which I call the element, sorry, the atomic symbol map. And there's a big X in the middle of this map. So this X, if you look on the period table, there is no element X, at least not X by itself. I mean, there's Xenon, which is X lowercase e, but there's no element X. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to choose a letter of the alphabet which is not represented by an existing element from the periodic table that you could get confused from. This is just a placeholder, okay? So instead of the letter X, I want you to imagine whatever you're looking or reading out, uh, out there in the real world, let's say you got C and it's got some uh, numbers in the corners of it, just put the C right on top instead of that X. So you can imagine uh, calcium, CA, and put that in the middle. Or you can imagine like um, uh, fluorine, it could be uh, capital F, and uh, put that instead of the X. It's a placeholder. Work with me for here. Uh, and each of these corners have a, a specific meaning. So I've got them in different colors. Um, and so it's really important you don't get them mixed up. In fact, I really recommend that you draw this map when we're finished into somewhere in your book where you can easily refer to it when you're doing practice problems. That way, if you're reading a practice problem, you go, oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? You can go to your map and go, oh, okay. It's, a, it's like, a, it's like a, a key or a legend that you can use to decode what the symbol terminology means. So the first quadrant, which is going to be the orange corner, that is where the mass number information is stored. Mass number, uh, if you want to learn more about that, go into the Atomic uh, Anatomy of the Atom series, which I define it in more detail. Here I'm uh, I'll be able to isolate um, that this is the carbon-14 isotope uh, by its mass number. Again, go back to the Anatomy of the, Ad Anatomy of the Atom series for more information. Bottom corner, we've got the atomic number. So that tells us how many protons there are. Very easy and good information to have. It's very rarely drawn into a, a symbol um, like this unless it's in a question where they're presenting information to you to work with. But if in an everyday sense, you rarely ever see information written in this bottom corner. But if you do see it, that's what it means. It's atomic number. The red corner is where you see the information about the element or that atom's charge. Okay, so some things can, some uh, atoms or symbols can be uh, positively charged or negatively charged. Um, in this case, I've got an example here of oxygen. Uh, oxygen becomes an oxide ion and it has a two negative charge and so I've got little notation there in the upper right hand corner to show that. And in the bottom right hand corner that is where uh, the most frequently you'll see that is how many of this element. And it's usually pointing to the elements to, uh, I'm, I'm pointing from my left, uh, pointing to its left. So uh, O2, oxygen molecule, so you can see the little two and it's pointing to the symbol on its left which would be the oxygen. We're going to need this information and we're going to apply it in the next little example here. So I've got our favorite uh, molecule, which is water. It's got H, little 2, and a capital O. So you can tell straight away it's made of hydrogen and oxygen, but how many of each? Well, I can see the number 2, and that means it must be pointing to the element on its left. So that means I've got two hydrogens. And the O doesn't have a number written to its uh, in, in its corner here for how many. In fact, it's actually a number one, but we never draw the number one in our uh, formulas or equations because it's not really needed. We do the same sort of uh, uh, cheat in mathematics. So if you've got something called like 2xy, you know it's double xy. But if I just write xy and I ask you how many xy's are there, you say one. That's because that one is invisible. Same deal happens in chemistry. We like to be lazy. If we can cut corners, we will. And this is one of our favorite methods of cutting corners. We never write the number one in a formula, in a balanced equation. And I'm sure it shows up in other places too. But for now, just keep that in mind. So that means I've actually got one oxygen. So two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. The formula down below is much more complicated. Here I've introduced a bracket. So you will see this sometimes on the more complex looking uh, chemical formulas. Um, so I need you need to, uh, to walk you through it. So the first element here is an aluminium um, atom. So I've got one times aluminium B 
because there is an invisible number one in its lower right hand corner. Um, now I've got the bracket. What does that mean? So it's a way of showing that um, the stuff within the brackets is being multiplied up by a certain factor. So uh, I need to treat it as almost I've got a box here and each of these boxes has O and H in it. So if I've got two boxes here signified by this little two in the corner, that means I must have two oxygens in total, two hydrogens in total as well. Does that make sense? So it's that, two times that, and two times that, if that helps you work it out. Two times oxygen, two times hydrogen. And the last element we have on our formula is the capital letter F, and F is the symbol for fluorine. And again, there's no number written to its right-hand corner, so we have to assume it's a number one. With that, we're going to move on to our next uh, episode, which is going to be about chemical formulas. Probably should have talked about that at the start, but hopefully you'll forgive me. It should make a lot more sense when we're done.